Hey everyone, what is going on? Um, today I am starting the install on the coilovers. Um, oh, I actually already started. I did the rears because when I was doing the brakes, I figured might as well just do them at the same time. The rears are super easy. They're just three bolts per side, two up top, one across. And um, here they are, fully installed. So I'm going to put the wheels on and we're going to lower it down and see where the back sits. So we can jack up the front. All right, moment of truth. The rears um, are wound to the highest set point. So uh, I'm gonna drop it down now, see where we're at. And uh, as you can see, we still got a bit of gap there. Um, we can always adjust it. I have like two inches to play with. And um, I think there's two and a half inches that I can drop it, so I can fill that gap, but we can always run it um, maxed out just to, uh, so we can run them maxed out. All right, so they're maxed out um, to the highest point. I can drop them two and a half inches. Um, from where this is, so that would be like tucking tire. So basically, I can run it where it's at and allow them to settle a little bit before adjusting them lower. Um, all right, so after doing a little bit of research, um, I found that these coils don't really compress too much. They don't settle too much, maybe an eighth, quarter of an inch. Um, so I'm gonna lower them an inch. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. We got two different wrenches for these ones. Um, you got this one here, which locks is for this one. You got to unlock this coil and then uh, spin it up. And then what you're going to have to do is make sure these two are tight because you don't want to start turning it. And um, see, now we're going to lower it and see, we're turning the whole shock body. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to lower this by twisting the whole shock body and dropping it down into um, the mount here, um, one inch. And we'll do it on the rear and uh, <clears throat> see where it sits. And uh, <clears throat> you don't want to adjust these ones just because this is your spring preload. And you don't want to mess up the preload. So we're going to lower this an inch. Um, the easiest way to do it is to measure between the bottom lock collar and the bottom uh, lock collar for the spring preload. And that way you can get both sides equal. Um, you can use a tape measure or you can go out and get um, one of those little tools that you can actually measure distances like that a little bit more accurately. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get to lowering. And... Alright, so now that you've got it uh, adjusted down, I adjusted mine down an inch. So there's an inch and a half between these two rings. You're gonna take your uh, one wrench here, and uh, as soon as I can grab it, you will uh, lock this bottom collar. And that'll keep it from self-adjusting or changing the ride height. And uh, let's put the wheel back on and do the other side. All right, so whatever you're doing, the front or the rear coiler, is you want to jack up the whole front end or the whole rear end. Um, so that way the uh, sway bar, um, if there is one, loses all its tension. Also, if it's rear and it's not independent, like it has a, uh, you know, a solid beam across it, like a cobalt or something like that, you have to jack it up all at once. But, so here is the inside of the uh, Stratus front. Yeah, we got a steering knuckle, uh, lower control arm, upper control arm, and uh, that bracket up there. Um, that bracket's going to stay in. That technically is like the top hat of the strut. So we have to take off um, that bolt there um, that holds the bottom of the strut. And then we got a bolt down here that connects to the lower control arm. And then we're going to take off this bolt here 
to pull the spindle forward and then we should just take the nut off the top of the strut and it should all just kind of drop out. Um, I don't think I should have to compress it. Um, I will have to check clearances on the front here because um, the uh, ball joint is cambered in a little bit so um, as long as the new coilovers are narrower or the same size we shouldn't have any clearance issues so now I gotta pull all that off oh, let's get going all right so we got the ball joint out of the upper control arm bracket here um, mine's an adjustable one so you can just kind of pop the bolt off instead of separating it um, got the nuts off of the top and bottom of this like wishbone piece and the nut and bushing off the top of the strut so now I just got to get the bolts themselves out um, probably just get this bottom one out it'll drop down and uh, pull that one out either now or once I get it out of the car but yeah so that's the whole assembly and once you pull that forward obviously you got a lot more room um, you gotta watch that right there this right here is your uh, ABS line which I don't use on my car but it's still there so time to all right so now we got that bottom bolt out of the bushing and you can see the uh, whole strut has dropped down now we just have to get this out and then compress the spring tilt it a lot and put the new setup back in all right so now we got the old unit out there's the new coil and the little piece that goes into here so now I just have to get this wishbone piece off put it on to that piece preset the ride height make sure that the um, preloads all right put it back together and go in as you can see there might be you can see that there's a little bit of oil so this this front strut was probably going bad the other one's probably just as bad too but I'm going to have to pound this shock strut out, put in the new assembly, preset everything, and uh, pop it all back in. And uh, probably fix that axle because it just kind of fell apart. So, I, I do have another one way up there in the back of the garage. But, we got it out. New one will go in. There is, I mean, you're, you're kind of supposed to take that whole bracket out, but the bolts were kind of seized. So, I just said screw it because that's how I put the e-box in. If... Uh, they're not e-box in there you'll have to either cut or uh compress the front ones to get them out like this the way i did so <clears throat> all right so i got the wishbone off the car took the bolt out uh the bolt actually there's like a little notch here i don't know if you can see it um that where the bolt grabs and uh <clears throat> so took the bolt out took a screwdriver opened it up and uh just slips in and out so the uh, coil over and then the uh, try to do this one handed then the uh, coil over see it's slot all the way around will sit in here like that and uh, yeah that's pretty much it the bolt will go back through there and uh, <coughs> lock on this little ridge and uh, it can all go back in. All right, so it is bolted in. I just gotta put this bottom bolt on, put the axle back together and everything on this side. Um, I raised it a half an inch from its lowest setting, which they came from, and uh, made sure the preload was set. So what we'll do now is uh, put this back together, and then do the passenger side match them all up all right all right real quick update this bolt down here is super easy to take out if you don't take the top off um, I was trying to get this uh, wishbone piece off so that way the whole thing would come out easier but that's what happened so I'm going to have to do the same thing take it out and wiggle it out All right, so I have the passenger side ready to go back on. 
But before I get that far, I just wanted to show you. You have to reuse the factory like rubber insulator. So the front will probably have to resettle because this is going to have to form to that, that new top ring there. It's going to have to get all squashed back down. So the, the front will probably settle a little bit. The rears probably won't settle at all because everything's brand new. So uh, once we get that on, I'll show you, and then we'll lower the car down. All right, so all the coils are on, and we're about to drop it down. Oh my god, that's so much lower than it was before. That's, oh my god. That's, that's crushed. I'm going to have to be very careful driving places now. <laughs> But it's good. My front wheel's not tucking, and I have about the same space front and back. That's that's low. That's about another half an inch lower than it was before, or an inch. That's freaking low. Oh my god! I'm so excited. I'm gonna definitely have to use boards to get out my driveway now. But uh, I think it'll have to settle a little bit because. Uh, the front, I just reused the isolators. I didn't get new ones. And uh, let's see. Yeah, this is where the splitter mounts. So that's that's pretty low. So um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I just gotta put on the uh, rear motor mount uh, that I filled before I can drive it. So that's it. Which hopefully I can get done this weekend. And um, then I'm going to do a whole like review and everything um, all at one time of the seat, the suspension, the mounts. I'll just take it out for a drive and uh, do everything at once. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I took my time doing it because I just don't have a lot of time um, with like two kids. But yeah, that's it. It's definitely a ton lower. And looks a million times better. So now it's just to uh, get the mounts on, put the splitter on, get it inspected, get my exhaust leak fixed, and uh, break it in before I track it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Until next time.